Welcome. My name is Carrie Will Susan, and I'm the Associate Dean for Admissions at the University of Maine School of Law. And I am joined today by Professor Charles Norkey, the Director of the Center for Oceans and Coastal Law at Maine Law, and four of his students, third year students Sandra Goldthwaite, Eli Murphy, and Lexis Anderson, and second year student Justin Carey. Professor Norkey. It's a pleasure to be with all of you. The University of Maine School of Law has one of the oldest marine slash oceans programs in the United States. Maine has, if you stretch it out, the longest coastline in the United States. We are the northernmost law school on the east coast of the United States. Hence, we have extensive opportunities and links from the port of Portland, Maine, across the North Atlantic, into the Arctic, and that has been developing even further because of the arrival about six, seven years ago of the Aimskip Shipping Company, which is a North Atlantic Icelandic shipping company. In many respects, the Arctic is a microcosm of what occurs in many of the regional law systems around the planet. And it's a great laboratory and an intense place for our students to work. The director of the Climate Change Institute, uh, Paul Majewski and I, are launching a course in January that will be co-taught between the law school and the University of Maine science programs called Arctic Law, Science, and Policy. And in that course, students will have an opportunity to acquire a basic knowledge of the Arctic, to delve into some of the issues far more deeply. And then the law students and the scientists will work together on a range of compliance issues real science projects that require legal expertise before the scientists go into the field. I was awarded one of the inaugural Arctic Law Fellowships, um, Eli and I were. Um, so we had the opportunity to go study in Tromsø, Norway, which is about 200 miles north of the Arctic Circle um, at the University of Tromsø, which I think is one of the northernmost uh, major universities in the world. Um, so we primarily studied uh, climate change and the effect um, on the oceans up there, environmental law, international environmental law. Tromsø is a, is a city filled with um, great resources. Uh, the Arctic Council is based there. But overall, just a really interesting place to see, uh, you know, firsthand the effects of climate change um, while learning the, uh, the applicable law. Um, really, really good experience. I, I enjoyed it a lot. Yeah, so as Sander said, I was, um, I spent the semester, part of the semester in Tromsø, Norway, um, doing many of the same things as he said. Uh, and I think one of the most unique points of being there and studying Arctic law, both in the environment and um, with respect to armed conflict in that region is uh, the lack of remoteness, learning from people who work and live in this environment uh, and made it a very practical point of, you know, everyday discussion, it's, hey, let's look outside, see what's going on. Yeah, so this year has been, I've worked on a number of projects related to the Arctic and oceans law, which has been really great. And it really started with being selected as an Arctic fellow last winter. Um, but it also afforded me over the summer to work at the New England Ocean Cluster, which was a fabulous organization that just opened up this last year. Um, and it's a sister organization to the Iceland Ocean Cluster, and they work primarily with the blue economy. So I got to do some legal research for them and really look at the industry side of oceans law, um, some international law, which was a great experience. I felt um, especially uh, grateful to be at a school like Maine Law because there was the option to take an interdisciplinary course um, taught up in Orono by a variety of um, practitioners in the in the field. In addition, um, Maine Law offers small courses like Oceans Law, where there's six or seven students in a class, and um, we get exposure to, again, a variety of practitioners across the field. So I'm definitely grateful to be immersed in that. And while I certainly still feel like I'm building the skills to be a, a relevant contributor, um, it feels like it's on its way because of the variety of options Maine Law offers. As I understand it, it really is about the interaction of industry and the marine environment. Um, but there's definitely an element of, you know, exploitation using the resources that the marine environment has to offer. But there's also an element of doing it sustainably. Um, and that's really something that the New England Ocean Cluster tried to tie in over the summer was that they were bringing 
Icelandic sustainability principles to Maine. And that's kind of where the blue economy comes in. It is a, a more environmentally based lens through which to see marine exploitation. So my ultimate goal, kind of my dream job would be to get a job working for the UN. Yeah, I think, I think networking is, is really key, especially if you're looking for a UN job. Um, you know, they're hard to get. Um, there's not very many of them. So the more networking, networking you can do, the better. And obviously, you know, being in a place that is just like central to where they're all working um, makes that really easy. In terms of career goals for myself, much like Sander, you know, the UN would be great. Uh, potentially the U.S. State Department, other things that are working on these high level treaties and high level multilateral discussions on this area of the world. I took a chance on this Arctic fellowship. It was kind of just, a, I, I saw it. I was like, that sounds amazing. And I applied on a whim. And um, so I guess advice too is like, if you see something strange, it just kind of piques your interest. That seems a little bit different. Is it maybe what you're focused on? Just go for it because this has totally opened me up to a whole new area of law, new region, new connections. And just, uh, you know, I wouldn't be on this, this, you know, graduate student project now that I'm on and I'm meeting so many cool people. And so, um, I definitely see or would like to see a career um, in that area develop for me working on an international scale. It seems like the future of international law is climate related. That's the defining issue of our time. Maine's a really the jumping off point for connections to all of the Arctic. Having access to teachers, to professionals, and to the curriculum that the only law school in the state offers I don't think there's a better way to to tap into that and, and to situate yourself to help out in those ways. I'd like to, to congratulate these four fabulous students because they are the very first Arctic Law Fellows in the United States. They are the only Arctic Law Fellows in the United States because we have the only Arctic Law program in this country. Um, it's worth thinking to or reflecting that the Arctic is an ocean. It's an ocean surrounded by states and those literal states connected to the Arctic Ocean are very, very much dependent on everything that happens in that ocean. The ice that melts, uh, the biological diversity, the fisheries, the geopolitics, the submarine placements, the baselines that are moving because of um, climate change that is inducing sea level rise, right? So the actual coasts and the maritime zones of this region are, are changing. It's a rapidly changing place and to get to know it and understand how it is um, uh, faring with these impacts is, is a tremendous lesson that can be applied in other regions of the world. And that's what we are giving our students. That's what we're trying to give our students. That and the ability to draw on other methods in addition to the law so they can use their legal tools even more efficiently because they can draw on other methods, science methods, social science methods and so forth. And that's what we try to give them in this unique program.